everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And I received a comment in my Nina Flat Wizard video pointing out that I never went over the Flat Wizard training data. And I appreciate that because it is such an easy and powerful way to capture flat frames. And that's what we're going to go over today. So if you find this video useful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Now let's jump into Nina and learn how to capture flat frames in as easy as one click. In my Nina Flat Wizard update video, I go over how the new Flat Wizard, it takes a little while to find the optimal settings when you set either an exposure difference for dynamic exposure or a brightness difference for dynamic brightness. It kind of bounces around. It takes a while to find the ideal settings before it goes and actually takes your flat frames. And the little trick that I showed was in equipment under flat panel, you can play around with the brightness and then in imaging, you can play around with exposure while monitoring your statistics until you find a combination that gives you the ADU that you're looking for. But now once you find that combination, there's an easy way to replicate it from night to night with a single click of a button. And that's what I'm going to show you today. And in case you're wondering, this method does work with both monochrome and one shot color using either an electronic filter wheel, manual filter wheel, or filter drawer. Now, if you're curious and you want to watch my Nina flat wizard update video, if you haven't already, if we go to my website, hiddenlight-photography.com, go to the menu, video tutorials, simply type in flat wizard, and you'll be able to find my video, Nina flat wizard update. I also have a couple of other videos going over the flat wizard if you're interested. So how does this method work? If we go into equipment, flat panel, up at the top right, we see flat wizard trained exposure times. And this is where the magic happens. Anytime you use the flat wizard and you have a filter selected, such as hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, sulfur two, it stores the settings that gave you your ideal results. And the trained exposure times that you see here are automatically stored anytime you use the flat wizard. Now here, as you can see, we're on monochrome with hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, and sulfur two. So I'm gonna show you this first, and then I'm gonna show you how to set it up for one shot color, or if you're using a manual filter wheel or a filter drawer. So before you do this method, before we jump in, what we wanna do is make sure that our flat panel is physically turned on. As we can see here, the flat panel is connected but currently it's at 0%. There's no light coming from it. What you wanna do is just throw a value in here. It doesn't matter what value, hit set, and then just make sure that your flat panel is physically turned on. Once you confirm that your flat panel is physically turned on, we're gonna to go to sequencer, advanced sequencer, and then under instructions, if we scroll down a little bit, we see flat device. And what we're looking for is trained flat exposure, which is right over here. We're gonna drag it onto the workspace. We're gonna choose the filter that we want. In this case, let's choose hydrogen alpha. Make sure that our gain and offset is set correctly. And as long as you have trained exposure information for your gain and offset, Nina will go ahead and do this. You're gonna set your amount of frames that you want, which I generally run 50, and then simply click play. Now for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna go ahead and knock this down to three, click play. You're gonna see it switching the filter, and then it's setting the brightness of the flat panel to the train data. And then it's gonna go ahead and take the exposures. If we go over to the imaging tab, we can check our statistics. We see that the mean values where we had it, and it's taking the exposures. Once it's done, it's gonna shut everything down and the sequence completes. Flat frames with a single click.
Now let's say that you're using one shot color or a manual filter wheel or a filter drawer. This method will still work, but you need to be able to tell Nina which filters that you're using so it can properly store the training data. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. But first, there's a couple of scenarios I wanna go over. Let's say that you use both monochrome with an electronic filter wheel and one shot color with either a manual filter wheel or a filter drawer. Chances are you don't wanna change your filter settings every time you switch between one shot color and monochrome. Fortunately, there's an easy way to overcome that. If we go into Options, General, we have access to our profiles. As you can see here, I have a profile for my 200P and I have a profile for my Carbon Star 200. Both of those profiles have my monochrome filter information in them. So what I wanna do is create another profile where I can set my one-shot color filters without disturbing my filter settings in any of the other profiles. What I mean by that, and the easiest way to do it, is to select a profile, we'll take my 200P for example, and click the Copy button. What that does is it copies all of my settings and configurations from my 200P profile and creates a new profile. In the new profile, I can set my one-shot color filters without disturbing my original profile. So now on the right, I can go ahead and name my original profile Mono. Then I can go ahead and load the copied profile and name it One Shot Color. Now, when I image in One Shot Color, all I simply do is load my One Shot Color profile. And when I image in Mono, I simply load my Mono profile. So now whether or not you created a new one-shot color profile or all you use is one-shot color or a manual filter wheel or filter drawer, what we're gonna wanna do is in options, go to equipment and head over to filter wheel off to the right. Since I copied my 200P profile, I have all of my monochrome filters so I can just go ahead and delete them. And what we want to do to set up our one-shot color filters is go to the top right to the little plus sign. When we click on the plus sign, we add a filter. From here in the name field, we can name our filters. So for example, we have Antlia Try. We can add another one and call it Antlia Quad. We can add another one and do something like Optolong L Pro, so on and so forth. Now, once all of your filters are in, we're ready to go. Now, how you use this, if we go into equipment, under filter wheel in the drop down, we want to choose manual filter wheel. And when we click on, we now have access to all of the filters that we just input. Now, I wanna show you something really quick. If we go into camera and turn the camera on, flat panel, under flat wizard trained exposure times, we have some defaults. You may or may not see these, but what I wanna point out under filter, we see current. Let's get rid of those if you see them. We don't want current. We want information on the actual filters. Having information on the actual filters is what allows us to choose them with the one-click method. So what I wanna show you really quick, I'm gonna go over to Sequencer, Advanced Sequencer. I'm gonna go down to Flat Device, grab Trained Flat Exposure and throw it onto the workspace. I never like leaving these as uh, what's pulled from the driver. I always like putting a number in there. It just takes away from one of the many variables of things that can go wrong. And under filter, I wanna choose Antlia Try. Now, if I click play, Nina's gonna say, hey, I don't have information to be able to do the flats for this. And what I'm gonna show you now is how easy it is to train with the flat wizard. I'm gonna click cancel, delete and back out. And what I wanna do from here is 
I want to figure out which settings are best to get my ADU that I'm looking for. Now this is the method that I go over in my Nina Flat Wizard update video. So make sure to check it out if you haven't done so yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to equipment and I'm going to turn on my flat panel. And then I'm going to go into imaging and just take a quick exposure. So now this gives me 26,759 ADU. Now, again, in my Nina Flat Wizard update video, I go over exactly how to figure out how to get to this ADU. But what I want to do from here is go into Flat Wizard. And we can choose things like sky flats. We can choose dynamic brightness. And we can choose dynamic exposure. I like to use dynamic exposure. Uh, even on the Pegasus Astro documentation, for the flat panel, they do recommend dynamic exposure. What we want to do is choose a filter. In this case, Antlia Tri. Again, I want to make sure to set my gain and offset. I don't ever like going off of what the driver says. We already know three seconds. And then for flat panel brightness, 45. I'm going to set my histogram mean target to 38%. Because what that does with my tolerance, it puts me right where I was. So I was at 26,759. This is going to be between, let's bring this out just a little bit, 22,413 and 27,394. Now for here, just for the sake of the video, I'm just going to capture three. Hit play. And then what the flat wizard is going to do is it's going to capture flat frames. In this case, three of them. Now, once it's done, what it's going to do is it's actually going to store that information. So if we go into equipment under flat panel, we now have the trained data. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go back into equipment, flat panel. I'm going to set this to 12, hit set. Now under sequencer, advanced sequencer, under instructions, for flat devices, if we take trained flat exposures and put it onto the workspace, set our gain, set our offset, and choose Antlia Try, let's go ahead and do three exposures. Now when we click play, it's going to set our brightness to the known brightness, and it's going to go ahead and capture our flats. And if we go into imaging, we can see exactly what we're getting. And that's how you get one click flats. One training session where you figure out what you need to get to the target ADU. And once you're done, all you have to do is just pull out the advanced sequencer, select your filter, click play, and you're done. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and the support helps me keep the channel growing. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Have you used this method before? Did you know this method existed? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.